All right, so now let's continue. Uh, we'll look at uh, the Euclid's algorithm to find the greatest common divisor or the GCD. Now, what we mean by GCD is if you have two integers, say 120 and 45, we want to find the largest integer that can divide both these two integers, 120 and 45, with the reminder being zero. Now, you know, when you want to find the greatest common divisor between this, for example, 120 and 45, the GCD, the largest divisor, cannot be more than 45. It has to be either 45 or less than 45. So a more brute force approach uh, of doing this is to start with 1 and divide 120 divided by 1 and 45 divided by 1 and see if the remainder is 0. Of course, 1 can divide anything and the remainder will be 0. So you can move on to 2 and then 3, 4 and so on until we cannot find anything above a certain integer that divides both of them with the remainder 0. So we stop, we say then whatever that integer, that the largest integer that can divide both of them uh, with the remainder 0 is the greatest common divisor. But the, the brute force approach will require us to go through from 1, 2, 3 up to 45. So we'll be essentially doing in this example 45 divisions to compute the greatest common divisor. So we want a more efficient algorithm to compute the greatest common divisor and that's going to be our Euclid's algorithm. All right. So in Euclid's algorithm, we are governed by this kind of theorem, which we could also prove, which I do in my algorithms class, but we are not going to look at the proof here. So the way we are, uh, the formula is this. So given two integers m and n such that m is greater than n, uh, we can say GCD of m comma n is GCD of n comma m mod n. Now look at this. Uh, of course, if m is equal to n, the greatest common device is going to be that integer itself, right? So we always have, uh, we are always uh, looking at more m greater than n because between the two integers, we can always pick one to be the largest one. So m is greater than n. And uh, you look at also this, we are replacing through this formula or in one iteration, m by n. So as we know, m is greater than n or n is less than m. So we are kind of lowering the magnitude of the integers we're working with. Similarly, n is going to be replaced by m mod n. As we know, m mod n, anything divided by n is going to be less than n, well, the remainder, right? So when you replace n by m mod n, the remainder is going to be less than n. And we keep on doing it until we reach a situation where the second term becomes a zero. So the GCD of k comma zero is k because um, zero divided by k, the remainder is zero, and k divided by k, the remainder is also zero. So that's uh, that's where we stop all right so let's continue uh we'll see some examples so gcd of 120 comma 45 we are going to say is equal to gcd of we replace 45 120 by n which is this 45 and uh then 120 divided by 45 m mod n so the reminder so 120 mod 45 the reminder is 30 then this is equal to GCD of 30 and then 45 mod 30. 45 mod 30 is going to be, the remainder is 15. Then this is equal to GCD of 15 and 30 mod 15, the remainder is 0. So now we have reached a situation 15 comma 0, so the GCD is going to be 15. So how many divisions we did here? We do one division to get to this, right? So this is the number of equals we have so this is one division and, uh, and then um, to get to this from this to this we do two second division and then to get from here to here we do three div third division and get to get from here to here we do the actually we want we don't need the division here once the second term is zero the first term itself is a gcd so we really need only three divisions here uh, one division to get the 30, one to get this 15, and one to get the 0. So we need only three divisions rather than how many? 45 divisions. Right? So similarly, 45 and 12 for GCD. So replace uh, 45 by 12 as the first term. The second term is going to be 45 mod 12, which is going to be 45 mod 12 is 9. So that's what we have as 9. 
then uh, that's one division then the second iteration we replace 12 by 9 and it is going to be 12 mod 9 so 12 mod 9 the remainder is going to be 3 right then the third iteration replace 9 by 3 and uh, 9 mod 3 the remainder is 0 then uh, once you get a 0 the first term is GCD which is 3 so we do again 3 divisions then 53 30 when you find a GCD uh, replace 53 by 30 and 53 mod 30 is 23 then uh, 30 is replaced by 23 and 30 mod 23 the remainder is 7 then 23 replaced by 7 23 mod 7 the remainder is uh, 2 then 7 replaced by 2 7 mod 2 the remainder is 1 2 comma 1 2 replaced by 1 and the remainder 2 mod 1 uh, the remainder is 0 so you have reached a 0 and 1 comma 0 the GCD is 1 now this is a special case here of course we count the number of divisions is going to be 1 2 3 4 5 divisions that's okay but what we are more interested here is if the GCD of two integers in this case 53 and 30 is 1 then we can say the two integers or numbers in this case 53 and 30 are relatively prime okay so when the greatest common divisor of two integers is 1 we say the two integers are relatively prime again not the word it is relatively prime we are not telling each of them is prime of course you see you know that 30 is not prime 53 is prime but uh, 30 is not prime so we aren't looking um, whether the individual integers are prime or not what we are more interested is in is finding out whether the two integers are relatively prime or not so uh, if you compute the GCD of the two integers and you get their um, GCD to be 1 then they're relatively prime even 4 and 9 are relatively prime for that matter so if you compute the GCD of um, 9 and 4 it's going to be GCD of 4 comma 9 mod 4 is 1 and that's going to be GCD of 1 comma 4 mod 1 is 0 it's going to be 1 so 9 and 4 are, are relatively prime even though you know 9 and 4 by themselves are not prime okay all right so we will be more interested in working with integers which are relatively prime when you do RSA so uh, please bear that in mind okay so we'll stop here